This morning we look at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 22 to 30, as we begin the penitential season of Lent, begin to focus on the cross of Christ. We'll begin a series called Love Speaks, and today we'll talk about Love Speaks precisely as Jesus says, strive to enter through the narrow door. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours today from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a little bit of a less familiar melody. That's Bach's arrangement of Martin Luther's great hymn today, simply to slow us down and change it up and to give us the opportunity to pay a little closer attention to those words. The words tell us the story of Christ's great sacrifice on the cross and God's great exchange. His Son, the perfect sinless Son of God, for you and I who are sinful. His righteousness, His holiness, His innocence, that we might give Him our unholiness, our sin our imperfectness before God. And there upon the cross find our salvation. It is Christ who goes to battle for us. It is Christ who's won the victory. This morning, that is emphasized in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 13, verses 22 to 30, as you and I listen now to the words of the evangelist concerning Jesus and his discussion of the narrow door. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, he will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you and where you come from. Then they will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from the east and the west and the north and the south, south and make their places, take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first and first who will be last. Let's just think on that for a minute or two here. This is a story about the grace of the mercy and the peace of God upon all those whose trust lies in the cross. A trust that isn't of our own making, but a trust that is purely a gift of that grace given to the hearts of you and I who believe. Available for all the world, but only ours by faith. Today we start the Lenten season reminding us of that time when we ponder Christ's love and our calling. It's a time when we hear the gospel speak in words of love. And sometimes words of love can be gentle, merciful, and caring. But sometimes words of love must also be stern and firm and reminding us of what it really is that, is all, that faith is all about, who the goal of faith is, and that you and I have been given a great calling, that you and I have been called to go out into the world as Christ and the apostles have done and make disciples of all people. And we're to do that, first of all, by baptizing them in the name of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But that's not all of it, is it? We are also to teach them. And not simply to teach them, but to teach them everything that Christ has commanded. And that comes with a promise. He says to you and I, 
Lo, I will be with you always till the very end of the age. How do we do that? Well, love first and foremost must speak precisely. There is a narrow door. Look, if I were to have some children up here and I would ask them a question, let's say I would ask them, uh, how do you get home? And they would say to me, well, I get into my home through the door. And I ask them, if I went out this door, would I get into your bedroom? Obviously they'd say no. And if I said, if I get into, go out this door, will I get into your home? And they'd say no. Why not? Obvious answer, because those doors don't lead to my house. What if I believed entirely that the two doors entering the sanctuary this morning took me directly into Disneyland? Would it be so? When I walked through them, where would I find myself? Heading into the kitchen. There would be no Disneyland. It is the narrow door that we're talking about today. Not any door, because not all doors lead to the same place, do they? We're talking about one specific door that leads to a specific place, heaven. Jesus says, strive, struggle to enter the narrow door. This is all prefaced with a, a question. And that question that comes to us this morning is in the 23rd verse of our lesson today. When someone asked Jesus, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He had told them that the synagogue ruler really didn't understand religion or worship. And he had told them that a crippled woman, whom they thought was outcast, being punished for her sins with this terrible infirmity, he had told them that she was a child of Abraham. That she belonged to the people of God. That the synagogue ruler would not be there, but the crippled woman would. Lord, are only a few people going to enter? Well... Jesus doesn't pick up the sense of the question, a few people. But if you listened earlier, he says, or he talks, he talks about salvation. He talks about being saved. And what does he say about salvation this day? He says, make every effort to enter through the narrow doors. So love speaks precisely. Everybody was confused, and people are still confused today, right? If you look into society, how many ways to heaven are there? Well, there's as many as you want to take, or so it seems. The modern ecumenical movement is like a rubber band. But when that rubber band is stretched so broadly that everybody's truth is equal in, the, in their own sight, you get a very shallow rubber band that is stretched to its limits. There is no quality, there is no depth there because not all doors lead to the same place. Many people today think that by doing good things, by being good people, they will get what they deserve and what they think they deserve is salvation. Sometimes you and I fall into that too, that pharisaical attitude. Trying to balance what we have done and know we have done wrong by justifying ourselves and counterbalancing that by the good things that we do in this world. But you see, God demands perfection. And when God speaks precisely, he says, even one sin is enough to block your way to salvation. Just one sin. And if we understand the Proverbs, when it says a righteous man sins seven times a day, and we simply use that figure, one day is enough to keep a righteous person out of heaven. Well, there are many ways people think, but Jesus says only one door gets you there. 
Think about the extremes that we see in our society today. Those religious followers of the TV show with the co-star or the star, Oprah, what do they talk about? Well, you don't have to be with God and you don't have to worship. What you have to do is simply be spiritual. And if you're spiritual, then you will find your way to salvation. What is spiritual? There is no spirituality without the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. And yet it's a self-delusion, a sense of good feeling that you impose upon yourself and make yourself believe that simply by feeling a feeling, you will enter heaven. On the other side of the equation, there are many people out there who feel like all they have to do is lead, lead a morally proper life. All I have to do is be a good person. Or all I have to do is to pray so many times a day. All I have to do is to appear here or appear there. If I punch my card correctly, then I will earn my way to salvation and God will be forced to take me to heaven. There are the extremes out there, and we've seen them all. We've known people on either extreme. It's very common in the world today. But the door that Jesus says to enter is not that broad. It's quite narrow. It's quite narrow. He says, make every effort to enter the narrow door. Yes, Satan is in the world. Satan is alive and well. Satan is out there doing all that he can, throwing temptations, throwing situations at us. Thank you. Prompting us with our own sinful nature to be distracted from that door, to go this way or that way, but not to enter the narrow door. But the door is very narrow. How narrow is it, we might ask? The answer is Jesus Christ, who says, I am the only way, the only truth, and the only life. No one comes to heaven except through me. And that's why the hymn we sang today is so important that we sing all of its verses because it tells the story of salvation. That it is Christ alone who stands victorious upon the field. It is Christ alone who does battle for us at the cross. It is Christ alone who through his death and resurrection has opened the way to salvation for you and I and all who believe. And when you believe, when you believe, you find that door open wide. And the Father at the other end, with his arms wide open as well, calling, inviting, and loving you. Because the love of God was never more visible than when Christ hung upon that cross and gave you his holy, precious blood and offered to God his innocent suffering and death that you might be his own and live with him forever in his kingdom. Love speaks precisely. There is only one door and Christ is is the way. So when you come in this Wednesday night for church or next Sunday morning and you enter the doors of the sanctuary, you're not moving from Disneyland to church, are you? But you're moving through the doors into this building and into this room. And when you do, look up here at this cross. This cross reminds us of who the narrow door is. And when you do that, also look over here at this font. Because through the power of water in the word, God has opened the doors of salvation to you. And look over here 
and see upon his cross, uh, his altar, the body and the bread, the wine and the blood, so freely shed upon his cross. And how do we know these things? And there is only one way. And that, beloved friends in Christ, is through this word. Because it is in this word and all that he has revealed to us that we know with absolute certainty that he is the doorway, that his cross is salvation, and that he is standing up alive on Easter morning, risen, that you and I might be with him in his kingdom forever. Love speaks precisely. Love tells you just what God has done for you in Jesus. And we are lights of that love, called to share a gospel of grace and mercy with the world. That through our witness of these many things, others may know of his love and enter that narrow door as well. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m.